Hold on to your butts. These are the Squashbuckler Diaries. Welcome back. My name is Guy Hasson, and you're listening to the Squashbuckler Diaries podcast about Joy Shelley, the girl who lives in the dreams. And this time we have an episode about a nuclear bomb. A nuclear bomb. I'm very excited about it. I like the fact that I can have a, a small child, a five year old child, mess around with a nuclear bomb and have that moment teach us about her future current heroism she's a hero and you know <laughs> I, well, i'm not going to spoil what happened so we're going to get into it i'm just going to say that in writing the squash buckler diaries i'm ahead of the podcast of course and i just wrote something that happens in episode 276 and we are building up to something. I did something there that foreshadows something huge that's going to happen when she gets to be six. Because season one is episodes, is uh, years two to six in her life. And something, not one thing, many huge things are going to happen. And I'm not going to say anything except it's something that has to do with Red, who tells the, these stories. And it has to do with Joy, and it has to do with Justin. And uh, there was so much. I never thought the Squash Buckley Diaries would be such a big part of the story that they, they would be used in this way to actually foreshadow using knowledge from the future. Because Red tells the story, and Red um, knows... Some, she, she knows, well, I'm not going to say what she knows, but, but something that happens after age six. Um, yeah, let's say she knows what happens to herself after Joy turns uh, six. I'll say that, and I won't say any more, don't want to spoil anything. And now let's get to some nukes. Episode 111, The Nuclear Bomb. Joy's age five, told by the Red Dragon. Dragon Lil was five years old when she handled her first nuclear bomb. I do not know what a nuclear bomb is. In the hundreds of years that I've lived in the dream, I've seen many weapons, but never something called a nuclear bomb. All I know about it is what Dragon Father told Dragon Lil as they were off to save the world from the terrorist pirates who stole the bomb. It is very dangerous. One explosion could destroy an entire city and anyone around it. No one knows what is the thing that makes it explode. Not Dragon Father and not the terrorist pirates. The terrorist pirates stole the bomb from the Ministry of Science on Jupiter. The Ministry of Science asked for the hero's help. Dragon Lil, five-year-old Joy Shelley, and Dragon Father, Justin Shelley, her father, whose dream this is and whose dream she lives in. The pirates were trying to make the bomb explode in their headquarters by putting it in a fire. Dragonfather and Dragonlil tracked down their whereabouts. Dragonfather, with Bunny's Revenge's cannons, attacked their ships, making so much noise the terrorist pirates ran out of the room and began to fight him. Dragonlil snuck in through the window from the opposite direction. She saw the bomb on the fire. Immediately she ran to the faucet, filled the bucket, and put out the fire. Happy with what she's done, she reached in to take the small, shiny, silvery ball that was as big as her head. She grabbed it with both hands, raised them, then screamed and threw it into the air without thinking. Hot, 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 hot! She put her hands to her chest automatically, no doubt trying to cool them. Even from my hiding place, far above, I could see part of her fingers were too red. She had been burnt. Then she looked up, realizing the bomb was about to fall. I was afraid I did not know if I did not know if her father's dream would protect her from such a bomb while he was not watching her. I did not know what would make the bomb explode, but there was no time for me to swoop in and grab it before it hit the floor. I was too far away even with my speed. 
Dragolil reached out to catch the hot nuclear bomb. She caught it with both hands and this time held on. Ah, hot, 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 she said as she ran around the room looking around for some place to put it. She gingerly put it in the bucket and only then let it go. She sighed with relief and then looked at her hands. They are all red. She grabbed the bucket and headed out to the terrorist pirates' headquarters. Even though her skin would peel for the next few weeks and hurt, which means the bomb had been as hot as the fire when she had held it. She was able to handle the pain of getting burnt to save the world. I felt heartened at this. I knew many of the things that were coming for her, the dangers that would eventually catch up with her because of who she was, not to mention the dreams that were not her father's world where everything is possible and her father would not always be there to protect her. Perhaps she did stand a chance to survive. Perhaps she did. Told by the Red Dragon. So, lots of stuff there, but let me tell you this. This is actually based on a thing. This, uh, like I always say, uh, uh, this... Joy is based on my three daughters, and this is a family album for us. Sure, they don't live in my dream, and there's no one hunting them. There's no red dragon. There's no mystery about their lives and how they are born, and they and we don't go out chasing villains every day. But this is based on them, and this is something my uh, one of my girls did, and. Also, this is something I saw my grandfather do, uh, who actually is uh, an actual hero. But um, um, this is real life. And when you're a fantasy author, you dress it up with a nuclear bomb and terrorists and other things and make it more interesting than it was. But what it is at the end of the day is who Joy is. And Joy was able to withstand terrible pain in order to save the world and that's joy that's who she is and today we learn that and next time we will learn something completely different called the stubble every time five to ten minutes we learn something new about her about life in the dream and we slowly advance toward big big things that'll happen and sometimes big things happen here And since this is the childhood of a future heroine, and since we will follow up on her entire life when big, big things happen and when she, you know, I don't want to say anything, but heroic, big, huge things happen and she lives an entire life, then her entire childhood is filled with Easter eggs of things that will come back in ways we never expect and we never knew. Because that's what childhood is. And this is a project, like, as far as I know, it's never been done, following a heroine, a fantasy heroine from birth to death. And we will see how it advances, one step at a time. So hold on to your butts and come back next episode. And now, the credits. The Squashbuckler Diaries are written and read by me, Guy Hassan. All the tags mentioned in this story are searchable at the website. You can find all the stories there in written form and in fact 150 Squashbuckler Diaries more. The Squashbuckler Diaries is the diary of Joy Shelley, the girl who lives in dreams. She'll be called the Forgotten Girl by her father. She'll be a true heroine. She'll change the world. This project shows her entire life from birth to death. Check out the website at guyhasson.com, that's G-U-Y-H-A-S-S-O-N.com. I've been an author and playwright for more than 30 years, and this is the first time I've used the guyhasson.com website, because The Girl in the Dream is my life project. If you have questions, if you want to comment, please do. You can comment at the website or email me at guyhasson.com at gmail.com. That's G-U-I-H-A-S-S-O-N G-U-I-H-A-S-S-O-N at gmail.com The theme music is called Brass Gentleman and is created by Thomas Harudek. My name is Guy Hassan and this is my life project. Come back tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow for more.
Come on. Uh.